Never Stop Learning, week 220. We're going to take a quick look at channel hair selection and color change in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. So a big shout out to my student, Adam. Uh, he asked me the other day uh, how to use channels to make a selection on hair. So on the spot, we ran through this demo. He found it really useful, so I decided to make a video on it. All right, so because this is practice and this is not for commercial use, I'm just going to jump over to my browser and grab a portrait. So I did a Google search for portrait. and I ran through. Any of these will be fine. Uh, but the reason we went with this one, uh, it's an awesome image for one. Uh, but another thing is it has a lot of hair wisping away here. We have some blurred out, uh, a couple single strands in here. And if you notice, the background has some tones uh, that are matching up with the hair. You know, they're pretty similar. So we're like, this has some good challenges. Let's use this one. So just right click copy image and jump over to Photoshop. All right, command N to create a new document. And right over here, I'm gonna type in practice, don't keep. Again, because this is just practice, so I get an idea of how the buttons work. I'm gonna throw this one away. And then when I'm gonna use this on a real project, I'm gonna grab an image you know, that, um, that I took or something like that. All right, over here it says document type, clipboard. The reason I'm gonna leave it on clipboard is so that the width and height matches up the image I have on my clipboard. I'll click OK and then just paste this in by hitting Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. All right, I'll zoom out so you get a good look at the image. Now, over here on the right, we have our layers. All right, so at the bottom it says background and Adam also asked me if we would need the background for this demo. Uh, I told him we didn't, so he got rid of it right away. And I think he was just doing that to be neat, so I went ahead and followed along with him. Now let's bring up our channels. I already have mine over on the right, but in case you don't see yours, you wanna to go to the window menu, scroll down, find channels, click on that once, and that's gonna bring up the channels for you. All right, so if you're looking for any of the panels, just go to the window menu and you'll be able to find them in there. All right, currently we're looking at the RGB, but if you click on red, it's just showing us the red channel. Click on green, it's showing us the green channel. And then if I click on blue, it's gonna show us the blue channel. Now the reason I'm going to go with this blue channel is you notice it has like the most contrast right here for the hair. It's actually uh, making the hair almost all black with uh, some gray tones in here. So that's going to help us out with the selection later. So to get started with that, I'm going to make a copy of this blue channel. You can make a copy of this blue channel by just clicking and dragging down over here towards the bottom. And once I got it in the right position, I'm going to release and it made a copy of this guy for me. All right, it's only showing me the blue copy that we created. Everybody else is hidden. I'm gonna double click right here where it says blue copy. Change this to hair. All right, accept that. Now we have a new channel called hair. It's identical to the blue channel, but hey, we created a new channel. Now we're gonna make some adjustments to this because I just wanna target the hair. Now, currently it's already pretty much black, but we're gonna make everything else white. All right, so we could just focus in on this. All right, I wanna make a levels adjustment. Now, most of the time I'm telling people to go into your adjustments panel and add a levels adjustment layer. All right, in this situation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Command L to bring up the old school levels, the ones that are just gonna burn in there. Now, this is destructive, but it's the way you work with channels. So I have had people ask me if, um, if levels adjustments are the best way to work then why does um, Adobe Photoshop still have the levels in this form? Well, it's so you could work with them uh, when you're dealing with channels and masks. All right, so what I wanna do is bring up my whites because I want that pure white to happen. So I'm gonna click and drag, bring it over here. Now I've introduced white. So you see some of it right here in the most, uh, in the brightest uh, position. So this isn't an image, so I'm just gonna click and drag towards the left and just blow out those highlights. Now. I'm taking a look at the hair, all right? If I creep this in and I go too far, notice it's kind of jumping into uh, my hair selection. I don't want that. So I'll back off on that a little bit. Right around there looks good. And I could bring in the black, but I don't need to bring it in too much because we do have some good black information here. But I just want to bring it in a little bit. All right, here we go. Now I have pure black going on in here. I'm not going to touch the mid-tones just yet. I'll play around with those guys later. I'll click OK to accept that change. There you go. So now I want to make some more changes. I'm going to start painting in white. All right, and I can paint that in using the brush. So I'm going to hit the B key. 
I have my brush activated. Now, at the bottom of the Tools panel, you see that I have white and black there. If you have different tones, just hit the D key, and that's going to give you the default of a white foreground with a black uh, background. All right, I want to paint in with white, so this works out great for me. So click and drag to start painting this in. I could use a larger brush, and the way I'm going to change this guy is, remember, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to use the Control key, which is a modifier I hardly ever use on a Mac, but it's there. So Control option click and when you drag towards the right it's going to increase the size of your brush if you drag towards the left it's going to decrease the size of your brush if you go down it's going to increase the hardness and if you go up it's going to back off on the hardness all right so this is how i'm able to make changes really quick and i get a good idea of what my brush is going to look like if you're on a pc and you want to see that heads up um, I believe it's by right clicking and holding down alt. So go ahead and try that out and uh, let me know in the comments if uh, that worked for you. All right, so I got this brush in here. I'm gonna start painting this away. This is just so I can make some quick changes to my brush. Now, <clears throat> I'm working on, uh, on this with the mouse. I would normally be doing this using a Wacom tablet. I actually prefer to work with a Wacom tablet when I'm uh, doing stuff with uh, channels, selections, masks, stuff like that. But uh, the reason I'm doing it with a mouse for this demo is I do not want people to think that they're not able to do this without a uh, tablet. I've had uh, some students use that as a crutch. They'll tell me that they don't use uh, channels and masks because uh, they don't have a Wacom tablet. And uh, I think uh, that's rubbish. <laughs> you should be able to do it with a mouse and a trackpad. It just makes it easier. So for those folks that do have a Wacom tablet, you're just going to have a better time playing with this. All right, so remember that little background area that we had? Well, we'll just get rid of it. You know, we're not even uh, going to deal with it. If we were using color range, it would probably present a problem for us. But check that out. We were just able to brush it away. All right, so I like how my mask is looking so far. But obviously, there's some fine tuning that needs to happen there, especially right here. I kind of want to keep some of these strands. I don't need it all the way, but I, I you know, I want to make sure that it, uh, some of it is still visible. So I'm going to get some help from this guy over here. In the tools panel, I have my, uh, I'm sorry, wrong one, burn tool. So I hit the O key to activate it. Uh, I'm not going to use the burn tool. I actually need the dodge tool. Dodge is going to help me bring in white and burn is going to help me bring in black. It's kind of like a simplified way to describe it, but uh, that's the way I'm able to teach it really quickly. So I'll zoom in on this guy and I could decrease this if I need to. There we go. So now I'm focusing on this. I'm just brushing away those gray tones in there. All right. So let's focus in right here. There it is. So now I'm just softening it up this. I'm still able to keep this little stranded hair in there. And you would just continue to play around with this as much as you need. Now, the reason I like working with this is check this out. I'm starting to creep in some of this in here, but I've gone too far with it. So the option key is going to help me bring back some of this uh the black for my mask. So we're creeping in a little bit more with this hair and you would continue to fine tune it that way. So the dodge tool is going to help you bring in some of that white right in here because it's needed. And then if you hold down option to bring up the burn tool, you could bring in some of that black right in there. So play around with that going back and forth until you get it exactly how you need it. For me, this looks pretty good right now. Obviously, if I was doing this as a commercial project, uh, I would take more time cleaning this up. But for me right now, this looks fine. So what's the next step? Currently, I'm looking at this and I have a lot of white happening. Uh, and I want to swap these guys around. So I'm going to hit Command-I on my keyboard to inverse that. And now we have a selection on the white. Before we were selecting the background, now we're selecting the hair. All right, when I do that, I can kind of have a better look at my... Um, at my channel here. So let me switch over to the burn tool. And if I need to bring in any of this, there you go. This looks a little bit better. You can continue to fine tune it that way. All right, Command L. Now I have access to my midtones. Click and drag towards the right, and look, it's tightening things up. Click and drag towards the left, and it's kind of uh, spreading out my selection a little bit. So over here where it says cancel, I'm gonna hover over it, hold down the Alter Option key. Now it shows reset. And when I click on it, it's going to reset the uh, adjustment for me. I just want to drag this guy towards the left a little bit. I mean, I'm sorry, to the right. I don't know why I did that. I want to creep it in. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's going to be a slight adjustment right in there. Click OK. 
That looks great. All right, so to make a selection, go back into your channels, hover over this little thumbnail, hold down the command or control key, click on it once, and now you have a selection. Now, when I first saw this, it kind of bothered me that it wasn't grabbing everything, but uh, don't worry about that. The marching ants are just uh, grabbing a large portion of it. This stuff is still part of your selection. It's just so small that um, you know it can't represent it in the preview. All right, click on RGB to see the entire uh, image again. Then click on layers so we have access to our layers over here. So, so far we used uh, channels uh, to create a mask and that mask uh, is what we use to generate this selection of marching ants here. With this, we're gonna generate a new mask to help us uh, change the color of the hair. All right, so over here in the adjustments panel, I'm gonna go with black and white. Now there's a bunch of different ways you could change color, but I'm gonna use this method. Uh, the preset, I'm gonna go with lighter. And it doesn't make a drastic change, but it did remove all the warmth from her hair. So you might notice that. All right, to create that selection again, just hover over this thumbnail, command click on it. I have a selection. Back over here in the adjustments, I'm gonna go with hue saturation. Click on it once and it's gonna apply it. All right, now comes the fun part. We're gonna start coloring her hair. I'm gonna click on colorize. All right, everything's nice and warm. That looks great. I'm going to increase the saturation because I, I kind of want it to look over exaggerated. She might be a club kid in this situation. All right, over here for hue, click and drag. There's the yellow hair, green hair, like turquoise, blue, magenta, and then like raspberry or whatever towards the end. All right, I'm going to go with like a bluish tone. I don't want to go too far with the green. Maybe something like somewhere around here. All right, and that's pretty good. What I don't like is it looks like she just dyed her hair and you know it's kind of creeping into her forehead right here a little bit. So we're gonna clean that up. Remember, over here in the layers panel, we have the mask targeted. So we could still use the same tools that we were using earlier. All right, so earlier we were using the dodge and burn tools for this. So if I start burning away some of this, we're gonna start removing some of that color, you know, the color damage that's happening to her skin. So in here we're just fine tuning. This is a, a quick way to like make some slight adjustments. There it is, that looks really good. If you wanna see the actual mask, come back over here and you have to use one of your modifiers, all right? So you Alt, I'm sorry, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, click on that thumbnail and it's gonna bring up the mask for you. All right, I'm gonna Option, click on it again because I'm on a Mac and that's gonna bring it back uh, to the re regular preview. All right, so that's how you jump back and forth between mask and your regular preview. Now, uh, if you wanna still creep in here a little bit more, double click on the thumbnail for your mask and that brings up your properties for that particular mask. Over here we have refine mask edge. I'm gonna click on that and you have different view modes in here. Uh, right now we have the overlay. This is on black, marching ants, whatever you wanna work with. I'm fine with the overlay for now. But the adjustment that I want to use is this guy over here, Shift Edge. It's under the Adjust Edge section. All right, if we bring it towards the right, check that out. It's bleeding out the selection a little bit. If we bring it towards the left, it's going to, um, you know, constrain it, shift it inwards a little bit. So let's reset this guy like I showed you earlier. Option, click on Reset, and then just back off on this a little bit. Okay, make a slight adjustment right in there, however you see fit. Click OK and then it just backed off on it a little bit. You can continue to make more adjustments if you need to. It looks like I might need a little bit more. Click OK, and just keep playing with that until you get the look you're going for. I actually like how it looks right now. I would make some more, uh, maybe like a blend mode adjustment or something like that to continue to sell this look, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what, you know, how to use your channels to make a selection on hair. Uh, sometimes it's such a big topic uh, that it's good to just, you know, give you a quick run through so you get an idea of how it works. So there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at channel hair selection and color change in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.